If you have just lost a pet, a cat, a dog, gerbil, hamster, rabbit, horse, pet rooster, and you are grieving, then I need you to know that it's valid. If you don't watch any more of the video, then I just need you to know that. I am currently struggling. God, it's not even the first minute and I'm off. I am currently in this state of grief at the moment after losing a cat. And we'll get into that in just a minute, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about grief in general and also how I deal with it, how I cope, because I've also lost my dog back in 2020 and that was unbearable pain. There is no right way to grieve, by the way. You know, some people handle grieving very differently. If you're a little bit like me and you've just lost your best friend, you've just lost your companion. For someone like me, I feel that deep inside my soul and it can take a while for that pain to go. I'm sorry to have to say that. For some people, they grieve very differently. Some people seem to move past it very quick or they go very numb or they talk about getting another animal to kind of fill the hole of the animal that they've just lost which is something that people always told me to do when I lost my dog. I had quite a few people tell me, I'll just get another dog. I could never do that or have done that so soon after losing her because it would feel like to me that I was just replacing her memory or replacing her. For me, anyway, it was just, it wouldn't be possible for me to do that. So people grieve very differently. Some people really feel it and other people seemingly kind of distract themselves from it or work or it comes out in other ways. So there is no right way to grieve. When I lost my dog in 2020 and I was in this state of pain, the, the grief was unbearable. I had no idea what to do with myself and I searched on YouTube for videos that would help me feel less alone with that pain that would make me feel validated and I couldn't find anything so I'm hoping that this video will provide some kind of comfort, some kind of reminder that you're not alone with how you're feeling. They weren't just a cat, they weren't just a dog, they weren't just a rabbit etc. They were part of your routines and intense integral part of your routines and life. They can literally turn your whole day around if you're having a shit day and you come home and you see your your little cat there or your dog there. You go and have a cuddle with them and they just kind of make you feel whole and they can make you feel less alone. See, for me at the moment, the grief is still very raw. Technically, it's my boyfriend's cat, but we had such a bond, such a strong connection that I almost felt like he was my cat in the end as well. Funny thing is with this cat, his name was Tim. I have never liked cats. If, if I'm honest, I was always a dog person. You know, even when I was a dog walker, I also do cat sitting as well and go in and feed the cats and every single cat I ever met just did not like me. It was just like the typical, stereotypical, classic cat that was just kind of ignore you or walk away from you or just like did not care one single inch about you. <laughs> and dogs were just so different, right? They were just so happy to see you and they were so excited and it was just a completely different vibe. And so for me, I always had such a big love for dogs, especially as I had my own dog, my own black Labrador called Holly. She was my best friend. She was there for me through a lot of shit time. And so yeah, I never used to like cats and they never used to like me and I was like, fine. When I first met my boyfriend, James has a cat called Tim. When I first met Tim, I had no expectations. I assumed like he, he was going to be like every other cat that I had ever met. And I remember he was curled up on James's bed and I went and sat next to him and I just kind of like stroked him and being like, hi, hi. And like I say, I was kind of ready to just allow him to have his own space and me to have my own space and we didn't ever need to properly cross paths. Like, I was gonna be okay with that. What I didn't expect was on that first morning that I woke up at James's place, I did not expect for Tim to be walking up the bed, climbing onto my chest, lying down and then purring like so loudly. And I was just like looking at this cat being like, what are you doing? Like, is this a trick? Are you trying to trick me into getting me to like cats? Is this what you're doing? Are you trying to double bluff me right now? And then James woke up and he was so shocked that Tim was lying on my chest purring. I was told that he only does that with James. He doesn't do that with anyone else, let alone someone he's just met. And apparently he used to be quite a timid cat especially around strangers. So for him to be doing that on the first morning, I had known him less than 12 hours at this point. It was a little bit of a shock. Cause like I say, I was not expecting anything from this cat. When I left James's place, I assumed that Tim would forget about me, that, you know, I'd come back the next time and he wouldn't do that thing again. Like it was just a one-off, right? But no, every single morning, except when it was boiling hot, 
out. He would climb onto my chest or onto my legs or onto my tummy or onto my pillow or into the bed next to me and purr. And I was always so confused at why he had almost chosen me, why he trusted and loved me so much when barely spent any time with him. But either way, the bond that he created with me became unbreakable. That he would not only come and cuddle me every morning, but he'd also join me if I'm working, he would come and sit on my lap. Or if I was watching TV, he would sit on my lap. He showed me that not every cat is like what I thought it was. And I never would have believed that I would fall in love with a cat but he was one of a kind, you know, he was special. I realised last night that I have never had an animal do that to me before, even my dog, even Holly. She was never a cuddly dog. She liked her own space. And so Tim was really the first animal to ever do that to me. And I think that's probably why it's so special. If I was working, he would jump up on the desk, make sure that I was doing the work. And sometimes he'd even watch what I was doing. God, I just miss him so much. The thing with Tim is he had a, a grade 5 heart murmur, which he was diagnosed with when he was just a kitten. And grade 5 is pretty serious. If you're grade 6 then you pretty much have heart failure or something like that. Two weeks ago today I never thought that he would not be here anymore. We went to the vet because he had a lot of water around his tummy and the tablets he was on was not getting rid of that water. And we went to the vet and I thought it would just be try this other tablet. And you know when vets are going to give you bad news because they're trying to figure out how to say it nicely and she looked very sad and she said he's in palliative care now i was in a state of denial you hear about the uh, the stages of grief i do know that the first one is denial and when she said that he's in palliative care and his heart is failing i was like no because he was fine he was eating fine he was eating like a horse he was playing he was purring he was doing all of the normal stuff that he does and so i was like no i really thoroughly believed that she was wrong that she was just making it up because you don't want to hear that news you don't want to accept that news and i think i was in denial right up until you know we t we took him to to the vets to put him down. I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it was happening. He wasn't an old cat, he was eight years old and that is quite young for a cat. I thought we would have so many mornings, so many years together. Never would have expected this to have happened so soon. And oh, the hole it leaves in your heart. The pain just hits you, the grief just hits you. It really hits hard when I think about all the things that I'm no longer going to have or the th all the things that I am now going to miss. Things like, you know, morning cuddles, even just like the small things like walking into the room and, you know, seeing lying on that sofa. He loved it out there. Or like walking into the bedroom and seeing him lying on the bed all stretched out and coming to sit on my lap. I feel so lonely in this house at the moment. And this was the same thing with Holly. Even if she wasn't in the room with me, I still knew that she was there. Especially if I was home alone, I still knew that she was there, she was downstairs, she was in a basket, she was wherever, on the sofa probably. When they're gone, it just feels so empty and so lonely. And I remember that after she went, I felt like I didn't know what to do with myself. I couldn't have a shower, I couldn't go to sleep, I couldn't sit there, I couldn't watch something. I didn't know what to do with myself. I remember I would just try distracting myself with TikTok and just going on TikTok for hours and hours and hours, but it got to a point where I just couldn't even do that anymore because as soon as I would stop the pain would just come right back or even like i'd feel really guilty because i forgot about the whole thing for a while and it's the same with tim being in this house it feels so lonely and empty here because even if he wasn't in this room with me i'd know that he's still upstairs or he's in the other room and there's just like just someone there finding it really hard going into a room almost just kind of expecting him to be there but he's not as soon as i realize that i'm trying to push the thought away because i don't want to feel the pain i don't want to become paralyzed with grief again but here's the thing like if you need to grieve there is no set amount of time it's not like oh you could only grieve for one day and then you're done. No, whoever tells you to pull yourself together or get over it or whatever, just fucking know. It is valid to feel this pain for as long as you need to. From the experience that I had with 
my dog. First month was just hell and we'd just gotten into lockdown as well. And so I was at home all the time and it was just like a constant reminder that she's gone, that she's not here anymore. And this is the thing with grief, it's not linear. You don't go from feeling a ton of grief and then it's just a diagonal slope down and then you're fine. It's not, it, it goes like this. It goes like this and I'm pretty sure I heard an analogy, I think it was by Steph. Michelag after he lost his dad and he'll probably say it a lot better than me it's like having a ping pong ball in this small little box and grief is like this big red button in the middle of this box the ball would like ping off the sides and hit the grief button and then you feel that real intensely and then it would ping off to the side and then go up and then down and then all of a sudden a few weeks later or a few days later or a few hours later it would hit that grief button again and bam you're like paralyzed in that grief and then over time that grief button gets smaller and smaller but every now and again that ping pong ball will hit that button and it will trigger you and you will feel it and I feel like that's probably a really good way of putting it because I get triggered by certain things and they might even just be the smallest little things the smallest little details that you don't think will ever trigger you but will for example Tim reminded me a lot of Holly when when he would fall asleep he would put his little head on his paw like that it reminded me exactly what Holly used to do when she went to sleep and it's probably like a, a universal pet thing anyway but I just hadn't seen it since she had gone and it and it triggered me and it really upset me and that's okay it is valid still so I talked about this in a previous video called disenfranchised trauma and instead of this being trauma this is called disenfranchised grief let me read this out for you from that video disenfranchised grief is when we minimize the grief because in comparison to someone else's grief it's not perceived in our society that it's really that bad a clear example of this is when someone loses a pet. That can cause immense grief and suffering. But when we compare it to someone who has lost an actual person, we minimize that grief because society tells us it doesn't quite match up. It's not socially validated or supported in the same way. So we push the grief down. And that is called disenfranchised grief. If people think it's ridiculous and a bit like, over the top for other people to feel this pain and this grief and this suffering after losing a pet. I feel like that clearly shows that they don't understand the bond you can have with that animal. The bond that I had with Tim was just next to none. Like I say, I've never met another cat like him, another cat that actually likes me, that would actually sit on my chest and purr, who would actively come up to me and want that. People who, who don't understand that bond will never understand the pain and the suffering that we feel when we lose a pet. So what I'm trying to say here is that if that's you, if you are pushing down this grief that you were feeling because you think that if you tell your mate over there and they're gonna go, mm -hmm, okay, yeah, but it's just a cat, like it's nothing to be observer. They don't understand, but I do. I understand that pain and how it feels to lose your best mate, how it feels to lose that companion, how it feels to lose your cuddle buddy. So disenfranchised grief is a real thing and it is valid. Please don't push it down for the sake of someone else's opinion for the sake of someone else's judgment. You have every right to grieve. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Take as long as you need. Grief comes and goes, and that's how I'm feeling at the moment. It comes and goes in waves. Like I will just be making dinner last night and I found one of Tim's hairs in my dinner and I had a complete breakdown. I had that, that swell of grief rise up in me. As much as possible, don't try and suppress it because it is so valid. And I believe that so deeply within my soul. After they go, there is going to be a lot of firsts. The first time you come home and they're not there. The first time that you wake up in the morning and they're not there. The first time you make dinner and they're not there waiting for you to give them a bit of your dinner. The first time that you're watching TV and they aren't there. There's going to be so many firsts that you won't even think about. I think that's when it's most painful. I think what I will say, just jumping back a bit, when you do make this decision to put them down, you know, it is absolutely your choice whether you go into that room or not. For me, both times, I knew I had to be there. Even though it causes me a lot of mental pain and a lot of distress, I knew that I had to be in that room and it is completely your choice if you don't want to. I, got, I, I understand it. With my, with my dog, we left her there so she could be cremated. And going into the vets with her and coming out without her was like an extra weight on top. Leaving her in there, it was excruciatingly painful. The alternative is to 
take her home and bury her yourself and that thought of it is like really difficult but this time around James wanted to bring Tim home afterwards and I thought it would be worse I thought it would be bad but actually leaving there with him was better than leaving him there from experiencing both things leaving with him was better I mean I say better but it's like it's not better because it's really shit I mean obviously do what's best for you but if anyone was wondering which way helped me bringing him home was the better option <laughs> fucking cat deserves so much better he deserves so many more years of love and life so sometimes life is really unfair and sometimes life is cruel. Cool. And hey, look, people who didn't have that connection with your pet, with your animal, with your cat, they're not gonna understand the pain there and they're not gonna get it and they might not know what to say and they might feel really awkward or uncomfortable because you're like a crying mess all the time. And so if that's you and you feel like you don't have anyone to turn to, then I'm really hoping that this video helps you to feel less alone with feeling that grief other thing like I keep hearing noises like I keep jumping off the bed or jumping off of the counter <sighs> I feel like that even now I'm kind of in denial because I can't let myself feel it because it would just take over me and over time you will start to adapt to life without them and it will be really tough another thing that I just want to mention please don't feel guilty if you forget about them for a while please don't feel guilty if you laugh at a joke or laugh at a tv show or a video or something when you feel like you should be feeling sad and grief all the time it's okay to just let your emotions do what they need to do I hope that makes sense because I know I felt guilty for even just smiling after my dog died. I felt like I needed to be sad all the time in order to like honour her. And the truth is whatever emotions you feel, whether that's joy, happiness, excitement, it doesn't take away your love for them and I think that's really important to understand so as not to feel as guilty. I really want to just want to talk about a couple of things that helps me through the grief. Like I said earlier, like I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't know how to cope. And I feel like this time round, I almost have a couple of things that I know that I can do that can help me cope a little bit better with it. If this helps you, if it, if it resonates with you, then great. If it doesn't, then toss it to the side. It doesn't matter. There are two things that kind of helped me. The first thing is a little bit bizarre because you would think it would make it worse, but it was looking through old pictures and videos of Holly and of Tim. And you might think that that seems kind of really bizarre that that technique would help you with the grief but I don't know I don't know whether it's just looking through the memories and putting yourself back in that video just to remind you that they are still there in your memories and your photos and your videos whatever it is it helped me massively when I would have that big wave that tidal wave of grief roll over me I would look through photos and look through videos and it would help to soothe me. What I did and what I've already done with Tim, you might already have this. I made a new album in my photos app on my, on my iPhone. I would add all of the pictures and videos into that album. So I have a dedicated album to them so that I can go and look through all of the pictures, all of the videos that I have of them and it's right there. I don't know about Android but with iPhone you can do a search on your phone, you can type in cat and it will come up with all of the pictures of cats that you've ever taken or you can put in dog and it will show all of the pictures of dogs that you've ever taken and I found that that was a really easy way to find the photos and videos. Basically having that album there is easy access for you to reconnect with your memories of them. In addition to making the dedicated photo album, I don't know why this helps me but it does really help me to write a little memoir of them and if it feels right for me i put it up on facebook i put it on instagram i also did a load of bunch of different stories about tim and just wrote bits about him and about our connection and our bond and our love and i don't know why that helps me but it just does help me to be able to almost like share how much love we had for each other to share how incredibly special and precious he was to me even if no one watches it even if no one likes it even if no one says anything about it just being able to get it out there and just to share it will really help and what's more is the people who have lost an animal will comment the people who have that unbreakable bond with their 
pet, with their cat, with their dog, with their horse, with whatever, they will understand and they will comment. It really helped me to almost feel less alone with my grief because other people really get it. I almost feel like Tim deserves to have that spotlight for people to see just how incredible he was. I almost still feel like I'm in denial, actually. I still feel like, nah, nah. It's, it's, he's gonna come back, he's gonna be here. And I will say that it is again personal preference, there is no right way to do it, but there's stuff for Tim. It's his scratching posts, his toys, his water bowl, his food bowl, his food, his like little cat bed. There's so many things around the house that it reminds me of him. When my dog passed away, we came home and my parents immediately gathered up all of her stuff and took it to an RSPCA place, donated it to them. Removing that so soon, like immediately after she'd gone, like in the morning it was there and then we came back after the vet and it was all gone. It was just this deafening reminder, a real big emphasis on the fact that she's not here anymore. Like I understand my parents wanted to not have that reminder. Tim's stuff is still here. In a way it can be more of a comfort knowing that his things are still here that almost makes him feel like his he is still here in some kind of way my advice would be to leave it until it becomes a hindrance until it's no longer a comfort to you that would be my advice but obviously you do whatever you think is going to help you and i have noticed like walking into rooms and seeing his cat bed there or his blanket or his his water bowl man it's just like it's just another here people grieve in their own ways and we have to make space for the people who want to keep it or people who want to get rid of it the biggest piece of advice that i can give is to let yourself feel let yourself get all of the emotions out if you want to scream if you want to wail if you want to sob if you just want to fucking lie on the floor and punch the ground let yourself do it because it's your body's way of offloading those emotions, of getting out of your body. Letting yourself cry whenever you need to is really, really important in letting yourself start to adapt and start to heal. Like you need to cry. Please don't ever suppress that. And I know it's hard. I feel like I suppress that grief when I'm around James because it was his boy, his cat. He been with him since he was a kitten and I don't want my grief to almost trigger him and and make him worse. The other side of the coin of that is that he knows, he knows how that feels and like a real life person knows how that feels and it's so much better if someone is there with you who truly gets it, who truly understands, who's, who's not going to tell you to get over it or grow up or whatever, they really understand and they allow you to feel your emotions, they allow you to let it all out and I think that's really really important when it comes to grief and sharing grief. So I do understand how it is difficult to feel like you need to suppress it sometimes, but that's your body's way of offloading a build-up of emotions. Like, you need to do that. You're gonna have to live with that pain for a while, and it's going to be really difficult because they were such an important part of your life, and that's okay. Take as long as you need. I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because if it kind of gets to a point when maybe years later and it's stopping you and you're still feeling that pain, you're still feeling that grief, then please talk to a professional. So you don't want it to stop living your life. They wouldn't have wanted you to do that. They wouldn't have wanted you to give up. They will want you to keep going. They say that only time heals, but I wonder if it's just, you just learn to live with it. You just learn to adapt to it. I wonder if that's the case and because it never quite heals. The pain is excruciating right now. Please take the time to take care of you. Please don't beat yourself up because you couldn't do a normal day's work or if you need to have time off then take time off just as you would if a human had passed away. Do what feels best for you. Like give your permission to let yourself relax. Give your permission to let yourself feel all of your feelings. Let yourself feel all of this grief because it is valid and I know I keep saying it but that's because it's true and I feel so goddamn passionately about that. If you had that unbreakable connection with your animal, with your cat, with your dog, like I did with both Tim and Holly, who was also your best friend, who was also with you through every part of your life, all of the hard times they were there, understandable, it is valid to just take that time and do what you need to do. 
to cope, healthy ways to cope. And look, depending on where you are in your grief journey, you won't want to hear some of the things that people say to you like, oh, well, they're in a better place now. I don't know why that just, I just don't want to hear that at the moment in the beginning, because even though, yes, it might be true, they are no longer suffering. And that is much better, obviously. You still don't want to hear that kind of thing. And hey, that might just be their way of coping. That might be their way of dealing with their grief by logically making sense that that's the reason why they're gone. I feel like in the beginning it's way too painful and too sensitive and too raw for me to hear that kind of thing. Does that make sense or is that just me? I was so wary of getting attached to another animal after I lost my dog because that grief was unbearable. But when a cat like Tim comes along, how could you not love that little man? How could you not love him? One of my favorite videos I, I ever took of us was so recently. It was the day after we had told that he was in palliative care and that he had heart failure and that he was going to die. I was trying to work on my laptop and he came into the room maybe about 11 o'clock, which is quite early for him. Usually he's asleep on the sofa or on the bed or in here or somewhere. But he came in, he kind of like looked up at me as he does when he wants to get up on my lap. And so I went and got his favorite blanket and I put it over my lap to make him a little bit more comfortable. He curled up, he fell asleep and he was purring. We didn't get up until half one. And I'm just so glad that I have that memory of us in the end. It was so special. <laughs> it was so cruel that I only had little over a year with this guy. And I thought we would have many more years, many more mornings together. And now it's just gone. If it needs to come out, let it out. Then also, it's okay if you can't cry. It's okay if you feel numb, like you're not you're not a bad person if you don't cry. Like it's okay to just grieve in your own way. If you still have your pets, please take as many photos and videos of them as you can because those are what you will cherish after they've gone. Those are what you will look back on, be comforted by. And if you do have your pet still with you, whatever animal that might be, please go and give them extra love, extra kisses, extra hugs, give them extra trees today and spend some quality time with them because those are the memories that you will cherish after they've gone. Taking the time out of your day to spend your time with them is what really matters because you just don't know when they are going to go. One day they are absolutely fine, just like Tim was. And he was playing with me with his little toys. The next day you go to the vets and you're told he has heart failure and is in palliative care. And we don't know how long it's gonna happen. You just don't know when that day could come and nothing will ever prepare you for it even when you know it's going to happen like we did with Tim. It was weird because we came home from the vets and before we went he was absolutely fine. He was eating like a horse. He was himself and then we came back from the vets and he suddenly went downhill. Would not eat anything. Lost a lot of weight. He was just not himself and it just goes downhill so quickly and you just think how could that happen? How could that happen? Because like a few days ago I guess another tip would be if you have friends, if you have people you can call up or meet for coffee or whatever, do it. Talk to them and let your emotions out and let yourself cry around them. Let yourself be vulnerable with them because even just like that act of telling them all about it helps to get it out of your head, out of your body. Just like with the crying, helps to offload the emotions from your body. Talking to someone does exactly the same thing, but with your mind. Another tip that I would highly recommend doing, for me personally, talking about them is so incredibly beneficial. You don't think it would, you think it would like really trigger them. But for me, when I lost my dog and when I lost Tim, I just wish someone could sit down with me and and be genuinely interested and curious and ask me questions about him. Asking questions like, what's your favorite memory of him? Tell me about his personality. Tell me about him. What did he used to do? What did he like and dislike? What was his favorite food? What did he like to play? Like literally any kinds of questions like that to again just kind of share my memories and share his personality with someone else and i don't know what it is about it but it really would have helped me to process things and almost just like enjoy the memory of him but that would be my advice to anyone who doesn't know what to say to someone who's grieving and maybe don't ask questions straight away but be like would you like to talk about them would be a an appropriate question to ask just wanted to jump in and say that because it might help someone else out there and I wish, I wish that I had someone I could call up and who would understand. If that's you at the moment, then I understand it. And I'm so sorry 
for your loss. I wish that they could live forever. I keep thinking and I see him. <laughs> There's all these little things. You can see him out the corner of your eye. Sometimes the grief will just come up when you're just doing an everyday task and it will just all of a sudden appear but for no reason. And you're like, whoa, what triggered that? Sometimes there is no explanation. It just happens and you just feel that tidal wave pulling you in and then crashing. It's almost like I can't cry anymore. It's like I've cried all of the tears over the last few days. There's no more tears left in me, but I still have these waves of grief just crash. All I wanted to make this video for was to let you know that if you are going through this then it is valid to feel this pain, it is valid to feel this grief and don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. I will punch them for you. I will. And I hope in some way, shape or form this video has helped you to feel less alone with that, feel more validated with your grief. Just hope that over time things start to get a little bit easier. And they will. And I know you probably don't want to hear that, but coming from someone who's experienced this already before, it does get lighter. And it might get darker before it does get light, but you will get there. Write it out. Write it out in a little notebook. Write it out on your notes app, on your phone. Maybe even record a little video like this. You don't have to post it anywhere. You don't have to show anyone, but just record a video of you talking about your cat, your dog, whoever, and all of the memories that you had and what you loved about them and what was annoying about them and their personality. And literally talk it out loud, which is probably another reason why I'm making this video because in some way it's cathartic for me to film and edit a video about my experiences. Maybe do something for yourself today. But whatever you decide to do, just know that the love and connection and the bond that you had with your pet will always be there. It's never going anywhere. Even when you forget, it's always there. They will forever live in your head. I really hope that this has helped someone out there feel less alone with your grief your pain of your suffering i see you and i hear you and i know how that feels and i understand it take care of yourself i'm sending you so much love right now and i'll see you in the next one